Hi, and welcome to another presentation from Your Business Tutor. Learning your way, anytime, anywhere. We have previously discussed that trade-offs will have to be made when management choose a grouping of staff. For example, if management want a grouping that is more customer focused, they will have to accept a greater level of duplication across the organisation. However, we also know that good management won't just accept the flaws in a grouping. They will try to do something about it. This is why this presentation on line staff grouping is so useful as it demonstrates what management may do in reality to ensure effective grouping of staff across an organisation. So what are we going to learn in today's presentation? Well, first of all, we're going to find out what line staff grouping is. And after that, we're going to explore the advantages and disadvantages of line staff grouping. OK, so let's begin by finding out what line staff grouping of staff is. Line staff grouping is when an organisation allocates its employees to line departments which provide core activities and staff departments which provide support functions. What this means is that line departments make or sell the product the business provides and therefore generate the revenue and profit that the business earns from customers. Staff departments, on the other hand, provide a support function to the line departments so that they run more smoothly and efficiently. For example, there may be a human resource staff department that manages recruitment for the whole organisation. As such, staff departments, unlike line departments, do not generate revenue or profit, but instead are cost centres. This, of course, can all be shown visually. And as the diagram shows, this particular organisation has three line departments, product divisions A, B and C, and three staff departments, human resources, finance and marketing. Now, I am sure many of you will already have made the connection. Line staff grouping is in effect a combination of previous groupings we have looked at. For example, in this instance, product grouping has been combined with functional grouping. This is an important point and one which we will explore further in our next question, which is what are the advantages of line staff grouping? Given line staff grouping is in effect a combination of other groupings, it is easy to see where its strengths lie. By merging two opposing groupings, an organisation can take the best of both and eliminate the worst of each. For example, the line departments provide an organisation with a customer focus. They contain staff who are experts on the products or customers they serve. This is vital as it keeps the organisation's attention on meeting the needs of customers, which in the end will drive revenue and profits forward. This, of course, has a further benefit as this focus on customers coupled with a keen eye on departmental performance, means an organisation will identify changes in the market quickly. And as we know, this ability to react quickly will give a business competitive advantage and help to enhance customer loyalty. However, this is only half of it. Because staff departments provide a support function to the line departments, issues around duplication of work and activities are eliminated. This means staffing and resource costs will be significantly lower, which will help to improve profit levels. Although this advantage is significant, staff departments bring even more to the table. As with line departments, Staff departments contain employees with expertise in their particular area, such as human resources or marketing. This not only means line departments will receive great support from their staff departments, 
but will probably result in a better service than they could provide themselves. This is because when human resource, marketing and finance functions are incorporated into line departments, they are sometimes not given the importance they deserve. Line department managers are more concerned about their product or customer and somewhat neglect these non-core activities. Of course, this is a mistake, as not putting enough effort into recruitment, for example, will in the long term result in staffing issues. A final advantage of line staff grouping is it promotes cooperation across the organisation. Staff departments, by their very nature, are set up to support line departments. And for this to work effectively, cooperation between departments will be needed. If measures are in place to ensure this, then the organisation will benefit hugely through the sharing of expertise and resources across the organisation, which will all help to minimise costs. Line staff grouping clearly has a number of advantages, but what about the disadvantages of such a grouping? As you might expect from our analysis of the advantages, line staff grouping does not have a huge number of disadvantages. However, as we have argued previously, it is often in the implementation where weaknesses can become apparent in a grouping of staff. And this is exactly the case with line staff grouping. As we know, for line staff grouping to work effectively, cooperation is required between departments. Now, in theory, this is something that you would expect to happen naturally, as it is in the organisation's best interests. However, this ignores departmental culture. For example, if line departments fiercely protect their independence, then this can cause issues. First, this might make them unwilling to seek out assistance from staff departments when required. But also, this independence can cause issues when staff departments instruct line departments to change the way they do things, as this can create conflict and resistance. If there are not clear rules on what level of authority each department has over another, then this allows departments to ignore each other's instructions. This of course can cause big issues, especially if the advice from the staff department would allow a line department to operate more effectively or make sure it was operating within the law. So what did we learn in today's presentation? Well, first of all, we found out about line staff grouping, and then we went on to explore the advantages and disadvantages of line staff grouping. Line staff grouping clearly demonstrates what is achievable when management carefully consider how they want to group their staff to achieve maximum effectiveness. In fact, most large organisations will group their staff in more than one way. For example, Global car manufacturers often choose to group their staff initially geographically, but then by product or vehicle, and then within individual factories by technology. However, in order that excessive duplication is avoided, staff departments such as human resources and finance may also exist to provide support across the whole organisation. Nevertheless, even when this is done, Problems can occur if the groupings are not implemented correctly. As always, this shows the challenge that management face in structuring their organisation effectively. Making a decision is only part of it. It is in the implementation and then the embedding of that decision in the culture of the organisation that will determine its success.